Hey everyone and welcome to my craft room. Uh, hi Kathy and Chrissy, already on. Nice to see you. A uh, bit of a delay at the beginning there. I was actually uh, mucking around with my iPad, making sure the volume was down, etc. Um, hey, so as I say, welcome to the craft room. Um, today I'm going to be featuring the um, beautiful baubles and detailed baubles thinlets from the, um, the latest catalogue. Um, I only just got these, so I um, haven't really fiddled with them very much. As you can see, I was so excited got the to getting these out, I actually ripped the paper with that horrible adhesive that they used to stick the the um, the thinlets to the, uh, to the to the backing. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to be looking at today. Um, keep those aside. This is one car a card I prepared earlier um, using the um, this is the the beautiful bauble from the the thinlet. Um, set that sort of meshing that you see the cross pieces um, it's actually backed with a circle of gold foil and I've popped that through an embossing folder so I'll show you that in a moment when I when I make one the backing here is actually stamped with one of the bauble stamps from the set this one here so it's stamped with um, uh, shaded spruce ink on shaded spruce cardstock that's backed with some gold and some Merry Merlot. They just seem to be a combination that lends itself to to Christmas. So that's really great. Just bear with me, I'm starting. There you go. Now I've got my iPad right, I can relax. Um, yeah, so um, anyway, and hi Wendy, thanks for joining me. Um, we uh, have, uh, yes, and so on this one I've used the Deck the Halls sentiment, which I embossed in gold. So you can see that's got a little bit of shine to it as well. So that's that one. I haven't put these on my blog yet, but I soon will, so sometime over the weekend. And inside I've used Shaded Spruce ink that's been stamped off twice um, to do the background, and then um, just um, one stamp with the sentiment there. So that's a lovely card. I think I quite like that one, nice and glittery. And always need a bit of bling at Christmas. Oh, and the Merlot ribbon as well. So that's sort of adds a bit of a, a highlight to it as well. So that one there was one I did this morning when I was preparing for for this uh, video. I thought I'd make one today that's slightly different. Probably not quite as traditional um, uh, Christmas colours, but just as glorious. Um, so everyone can see my host code for November there. I've got some free offers on at the moment if you order from me and use that host code. Um, I'll pop those in, the link to those in the um, in my comments as well. But fundamentally, um, buy, buy from me, use that host code and depending on what you buy, you can get free products from me. Okay, so the one I'm going to make for the video, I've gone to Mint Macaron. So I've got a card base here. Um, oh, hi Claire. Wow, first time you've joined me on this is quite embarrassing now. Anyway, um, so I've, uh, I've got a mint macaron card base, standard card base for most of my cards and working in inches because that's the sort of girl I am. It's um, eight and a quarter inches long, four and an eighth inches wide and scored in the half in half to make a, a portrait card base like like that one so i'll just pop that one aside i've got an insert in whisper white which is just smaller so as i say i'll put the measurements in my um, blog but that's like an eighth of an inch smaller around all the edges and i thought well i'm going to keep on with the bling theme so i've actually used silver to highlight the mint macaron and this is a panel of the glorious um, DSP, the glorious designer series paper from the first frost. You recognise the back of that one. But that's just, it's got a beautiful sheen to it as well. I'm glad I've got a couple of packs of that, so I'll be using that through Christmas and all year round. So um, that's, uh, that's there as well. So what I've actually done, and I've pre-cut everything so you don't have to tr um, watch me cut, um, is I have cut from the... The, the die set I have cut a bauble out of the silver so that's the bauble and I've cut that with silver foil sheet I've cut this doily backing um, piece also out of silver so there it is there so that's that there 
you also need to when you're cutting this one you actually need to cut it surround as well so you need both of those dies in your machine when you cut and I've got a circle which fits perfectly behind our bauble um, which I'm going to pop through the um, embossing machine using this glorious sort of like if you can see that with the light coming in we oh, can see me hello um, yeah that's the one that um, oh gosh now can someone remind me what that's called I just got it out of its paper um, that's the softly falling textured um, textured impressions embossing folder so it sort of looks like it's a snowfall probably best that way sort of snow sort of gradually fading to only a few snowdrops at the bottom so anyway I think that looks quite nice um, behind there to highlight our bauble anyway so I'll get the embossing machine I'll do that first so I've got an old style emboss uh, big uh, embossing mat so you can see all the things are stuck together you get rid of the first one you leave just the bottom one and the platform pop your moving my iPad or it's going to fall on the floor you put the um, the bottom plate on now I'm going to position this circle so that it's got sort of a lot of, of dots at the bottom yes thanks <laughs> thanks Wendy it's got a lot of dots at the bottom and it sort of graduates to hardly hardly any at the top so sort of around around there pop that in to the machine top plate and pop it through excusing the vibrating noise shaking we'll get rid of that and there you see we have our circle with its with its pretend snowflakes on it I think that's quite pretty and if you pop that behind the the lace work of the bauble I think it adds a bit of dimension to it which I quite like so I will use that there so what I'm going to do is with trying to be as sparing as possible I'm going to pop some glue on the back of that and we all know how successful sometimes I am at getting glue everywhere so I'll just do and I'm going to sit for this so I'll just put and I'm assuming that you guys can still see me because I can't watch and do this at the same time just going to put dots of glue all the way around hoping not to make too much gluggy mess and around those little circles there just a touch of glue and really it doesn't have to be every one but just so you've got a few position this so that the most of the, the circle the little dots of snow are at the bottom and as hard in behind so that you cover as much of it as possible and press that down now I've got a baby wipe here Oops, it comes crashing down I've got a baby wipe here a new one so it's moist and what I'll do is and since I'm using foil um, it's sort of like it's a it'll repel the the liquid the moisture from the from the baby wipe and keep a nice shine while I force those that glue down hopefully not glue it to my grid paper okay so that's sort of that's as stuck down as it needs to be at the moment oh she says moving it okay yeah I think it does look good Wendy yeah I like this one I like that the overlay just gives it a, a more of a you know a 3d effect makes it look actually like a like a almost like an actual bauble okay so we've got that made I'll let it glue I'll let it, the glue stick for a moment just let it dry for a second and I'll assemble the card the rest of the cards fairly fairly standard as I say I've got my our mint macaron I've got a sheet of silver which I'll attach make sure I don't move too sideways here guys or you won't see me at all that's there as even as I can just 
straight as I can. There we go. And then this glorious DSP. Pop that on as well. That is shiny silver. You can see my face in it. Just looking at the replay on my iPad. Pop that one on next. I think that on its own, that is a lovely combination. I don't know, it just appeals for some reason. There we go. I might turn that paper over. I've got too much glue on it already. So we'll turn that there. So we've got that. That might be my fingers. I've got glue on them. I'll just uh, use Michelle's trick. If you're watching back afterwards, Michelle, thank you for your degluing trick. Works really well. There, see, not going to stick to anything now. Okay, so that's our base card there. Now I've got this, this doily surround that I've also cut. Some of the inserts haven't come out, but I'm sure they will. And I'll just attach that. Glue around the edges there. Got glue on my paper again, so that's going to just cause glue issues afresh. Okay, so I'm going to put this one probably slightly up higher than central, um, vertically central, and as straight as I can. Let's put that one in. I'll just use the this to give it a glue it down. Okay, so that's that. I was actually going to put under this, and I, I don't know if you guys agree with me, I also cut the surround in white. I was actually going to put that underneath, if you can imagine what it would look like. But I think I like this, love this um, DSP, this paper so much that I, once I covered it, I thought that was such a shame. So I thought I'd let it, let it be out and proud. Um, so, yeah, so... You can actually see it around our bauble. So that's where our bauble is going to go. That glue still hasn't quite dried. Maybe I put too much. Anyway, that's fine. I'll pop this one on as well. So I'll put the our um come down a little bit. Put our bauble here so that the um it's not quite central as far as that's concerned but the the little um supposed um string holder at the top there that you would if it was a real bauble you'd have your string there that would hang you to your tree is uh, is lined up with with the top as well try and get that lined up with the the surround so i think that's quite i like that i like those colors they just appeal Okay, so that's the basics there. And if you didn't have a bow, it wouldn't be Christmas, would it? So I've made a little bow here. This is with the stamping up uh, ribbon, um, this one. This is with the, um, the silver, I think it's metallic edge ribbon. I really like that one. And as I've said in previous videos, I'm not really a ribbon person, but this one really appeals. So off camera, because I'm not really adept at it. I've made my little ribbon here and I'll just attach that to the top of our bauble with um, glue dots if I can't the hip with some glue dots. Love glue dots. That'd have to be the best adventure uh, invention for gluey fingered people like me. So I pop that on the back of the bow. Perfect. And then just below this other, the first one I did, I noticed I put the bow too high. And to be honest, it just looked like a circle with a bow on the top. This time I've put it slightly lower so that you can actually see that this is a bauble with a, with a, um, you know, the capacity to have a, have a piece of ribbon or something coming out of the top of it. So there. And I think that ribbon's even going to sit nicely, which is a, which is a, saying something for me. So there we go. What do we think of that one? I think that's really sweet. Um, yeah, I'm glad I didn't put the um, 
I'm glad I didn't put the uh, put the um, the thing behind, but um, yeah, I like it without too windy. So yeah, I think that I could try it with it next time, see how it goes. But I like that little ribbon there as well. So what do we think? Pretty cool. Okay, so the inside. I'll do the inside the same as I did the other one. Where is the other one? I've lost it. Okay, here it is. So you can see the two designs there. So you can see this one. I, if I do it again, I'll actually do that ribbon so it's lower. So it's like this one. So you can actually see it's a ball board, not just a circle. So I'll do the inside. The inside of this one I did with the um, shaded spruce, sort of with a couple of stamp offs there. So this one I will do, since this is a mint, mint macaron, I will get my mint macaron, which I didn't get out yet. <coughs> Over here. Oh, I was going to have not put anything on the front. Okay, didn't get this far in my plan when I was laying in bed this morning. So I was going to put a sentiment on the bottom. But I think I will still do, do it with mint macaron. And I had in my mind possibly a bit more silver. You know, you can always have a bit more silver. Um, and then with some vellum. I thought maybe on the vellum would, wouldn't be too wouldn't detract too much from what I was trying to achieve with the silver so I might do that and I thought I'd try this just this little simple sentiment here which says this one that says Merry Christmas and Happy New Year so I'll try um, that one hi Marie thanks for joining me um, so I think I'll do that one I'll just get myself a block as I say at the moment from now on we are actually winging it so we'll see how it goes. I hate to ruin it because I think it's so pretty. Anyway, so here we go. That's my mint macaron. Get everything out of the way so I don't get get it everywhere. And what I thought I might do, because um, inking on vellum is sometimes a little bit patchy, what I thought I might do is do it with the ink and then emboss it in clear. So I've got my clear embossing powder there at the ready, ready to go. I find when you're embossing with just ink, you have to be pretty quick because it dries. So I'll just pop that on there. I can hear somebody in my kitchen. Okay, and I'll bring in my embossing piece of scrap paper. This is the clear embossing powder. Move that out. Just put it on there as thickly as I can. Oh, I forgot my embossing buddy. I'm sure everyone was saying embossing body. Anyway, that's uh, hopefully got enough stuck there. And with the clear, it doesn't matter too much because you, if any errors you make, you're not going to see them because it's clear. Hang on. Forgive the noise. I'm just going to put my uh, embossing gun, uh, heat gun on. <laughs> it's flapping around a bit. Oh, it's going to burn my fingers. Oh, yeah, it's starting to turn now. I might do it from the front, but then at least I can watch it, its progress. Okay, I think that is done. Yep, that's done. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that. That's now quite, from before it was quite faint and it's not actually quite even, but I'll forgive myself. Um, and that's actually given it a bit more colour than it would have normally had just with ink. I'll just get rid of that. Put my embossing powder back in. And here we go. So that's my sentiment going to back that on a little piece of silver that's just cut slightly larger. I'll just trim those. Uh, where's my trimmer, 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 trimmer here? I'll just use my little guillotine, forgive me. It's um, I've had it forever and ever, even before I started um, stamping up. But I, I, you know, you find these things in life that you just, you know, you can't, you can't stop using because they are just so good. So I, this is a hangover from a previous life. 
but if Stamping Up had one, I would be the first in line to buy it. And I'll do the same with our silver, just leaving a little bit of a gap. So I'll just glue that. Now the trick with I find with vellum, if you if I just went dob 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 with my with my glue, I would you'd be able to see a patchiness through the vellum. So what I actually do with my vellum is I get some sponge, and hopefully, just bear with me, I've got some sponge somewhere. Oh. You can tell I didn't think this far ahead, and I was planning. So I've got some just some sponge. And I will add some glue. You can add it directly, just making sure I pick the right side. You can add it directly to your um, vellum, but then use your sponge to sort of spread it around. And, and you, you leave a little film there. And because it's even and spread around, you don't see it through when you attach it to the, to the paper. There we go. So that's attached without seeing any blobs or seams or seams or anything or you know glue dots or anything behind it. So what do we think of that? I think that's quite sweet. So I'll add that down the bottom here. I can add it there, there, there. Now I'll just add it down there. Fairly standard. And I might mount it up on some. Oh, what have I got? I'll mount it up on some, some dimensionals. Just two, I think, because it's not that big. Get it as central as I can. Right there. Okay, so there's the front of that one. That's for your blingy Christmas, that one. That's blingy central. And I'll just do the inside. Clean that one off. Okay, so I'll do the same as I did with the other one, but in a different colour. I'll use the mint macaron again. So I get the this stamp from the this bauble stamp from the stamp set. Get a large block, pop it on there. My ink, accumulating stuff here. Get my ink. As I say, I'm going to stamp this one off so that it's just a hint of colour. Pick the right. Ah, oh, no, need a new piece of paper. Stuff that. Come on, bear with me. Just going to cut a new insert. Just going to cut a new insert. So that's, forgive my silence, that's four inches by five and five eighths inches for the insert. Start again, rewind. Okay, so here we've got the stamp all mounted up. Got our insert there, mint macaron ink. I'm going to stamp it off twice and see how it looks. One, two, three. Actually, I think three is too far with the mint macaron. I'm going to just go two, I think. So I'll stamp off once and then go the second one onto the paper. So one and then on. Because obviously it's not quite as dark a colour as, um, as the shaded spruce. Pop that on there. Yeah, that's nice. So that's sort of there, but not darkly there. Yeah, it's not, you know what I mean. And I'll get the same sentiment that I used before. This is quite a sweet sentiment. It actually says, 
Hope you find beauty in the details of the season. I don't know why that struck a chord with me. I know we're all so rushed at Christmas time that sometimes you, you don't stop to see the details. You just go, 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 go. So I'll do this one, stamp this straight on in the middle of there. And I hope this works because it's, it's not as dark. So we'll see how we go with this. I may have to choose a darker colour. Maybe the shaded spruce, but we'll see how this looks. Yeah, that's not too bad. It doesn't get lost too much in the in the background because of that one stamping off. So that's good. Get rid of the ink. We don't want another disaster. And I'll attach this inside. my card gone oh where are you there's the original one. Oh, here it is went right instead of left that's a bit deceptive now make sure I'm up the right way how many inserts have we put in the wrong way ladies more than I'd like to count there we go I don't know I don't know about you guys but I'm just attracted I just get drawn to these colors Thankfully, I don't think Christmas is as strict with its colouring as it used to be. I think Christmas can be just about anything to anyone these days. Okay, so that's our two cards with the um, beautiful baubles. I was really stuck for inspiration with that. It's a beautiful set, but um, they all, so all the cards sort of look the same. But anyway, they're slightly different. So we've got our more traditional Merry Merlot and um, Shaded Spruce with the background. And we've got the less traditional silver with the mint macaron and the beautiful dsp so uh, different strokes for different folks i suppose so that's those there yeah it's too many okay so they're they're quite pretty um so i thought if we if we like and if we've got time i thought i might i sort of only taken 20 minutes i suppose because i cut all those i thought i might go a bit um a bit out there or a bit um uh, what's the word? Wing it a bit more. I actually got in a delivery during the week the Buffalo Check um, background stamp, which I'd never given much thought to uh, recently until I actually saw it used, and it seems really, really um, versatile. So I thought I'd give it a bit of a go um, today. So I've I've done a couple of um, stamps of the actual check, but I haven't used it in any cards yet. So. Watch me now as we, uh, I'll try and um, think so, think of something up as we go along. So, I don't know about you guys, but as soon as I saw that with the real red and on the whisper white, I thought Santa Claus. I don't know why. I suppose it's nearly Christmas and um, red and white is Santa Claus. So I thought maybe I could do something with a Santa Claus theme. So just let me tidy up a little bit, get rid of those, put that back because I don't want that. So I, yeah, so I thought maybe um, I'd do red and white again, but I, I'll re-stamp it because I smudged the original with my finger, as I usually do. Um, so I'll, um, I'll stamp another one. Absolutely, I think, a lifesaver to use your stamparatus with this stamp. I tried it without. And because you basically have to go over it, well, I do, I don't know about everyone else, so I had to go over it a couple of times to get the colour um, complete enough. Um, I definitely needed the Stamparatus to, uh, to make sure I got it lined up with multiple stamps. So here's my stamp. And because it's so large, you have to keep, leave your paper large, was what I decided when I did my first one, because you need room to actually get your um, to get your uh, magnets around it so that they they do their job. So leave your paper large, put your magnets on so they're well and truly out of the way of your um, of your stamp, and then position this nice and straight on there. So I thought I'd stick to the real red. I've left my foam in there as well. Um, just because it needs, although it's a, you know, I shouldn't need to. It just gives it that extra bit of um, 
um, um, support. So there's my stamp on. Oops, do a little bit of red there. And anyway, that's all right. Thought I'd stick with the real red. That's my real red in the old design stamp pad. If you can still remember how to use them. And I will stamp up. I'll just move myself sideways a little bit so you can see me stamping up. Just bear with me for a second. So hopefully that you can see a bit of both. So I'm going to stamp this up. And I think it uses, you know, it does, it uses a lot of ink if you want complete coverage. So there, give it a go. First attempt. I might stand up and put some pressure on it. There we go. So as you can see, I put a lot of ink on that and it's still not com quite complete. Some people might like it that way, but I like it a bit more, a bit more matte, uh, you know, a bit block, more block finish. So you'll give it another go. Thank heaven for the Stamparatus. A bit more pressure. Real red everywhere. Had on my fingers from last night, I noticed. There we go. So that's that's better. To be honest, I think I'll probably go another go. That's just me. And just one third time for third time's a charm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. So I'll just bring that a little bit closer to the camera. So that looks pretty much it's the best thing I think with this is the fact that you've got so many possibilities it's basically like you've bought buffalo check paper in in any combination that you can think of because you can you can do you can do the red you can do the colors on white you can do the colors on colors you can do anything any combination you like so I think this is going to be one of my favorites from now on so anyway that's my backing. Just give this a bit of a wipe off. I won't clean it properly just yet, just so it doesn't get ink everywhere on me. And I'll just get rid of my stamparatus briefly. Okay, so that's the backing for my card. Um, I'm going to just trim it down. So it's. Uh, so I thought, what if I'm using? Uh, real red ink. I've got use a piece of real red backing, and we've got white in there. So I've got a, a tiny piece of white as well. So I don't know which which way to do it that way. Anyway, I'll trim this off first. Actually, skip to one I did earlier. That's the one I did first. So you can see it's basically the same, but I've trimmed it down just to save a little bit of time, and so you don't have to watch me trimming things. Okay, so we've got. We could go the red underneath, or we could go and white like that, or and I think that makes the red bleed into itself a bit much. We'll go, oh, hang on, what about black? Why don't we try black? There we go, just got some black. How about we go instead of white? How's that? That's sort of like Santa's belt buckle. So we could sort of almost say it's a santa -y colour. I think I like that. I'll wait for you to catch up so you can tell me whether you like it as well. That one there. What do we think of that? There you go. Anyway, so yeah, I think I'll go with that and leave that. That can be my insert. I'll come back to that piece later. Oh! paper everywhere okay so I'm gonna make a basic card with that with a red base card so I'm just gonna find my cutter red base card again it's going to be uh, five and three quarters high this is my standard anyway everyone's slightly different I just don't like to waste card and then I'm scoring it at four and an eighth. 
scoring, not cutting. This is often an error I make. How many scores do we? Yeah, go black, I think so too. How many times do we cut instead of score? I'm slightly off there. Pop that to the side and force that down a little bit. So there I've got my base card, beautiful real red, slightly off there, but that's all right, I'll trim it in a second. Just trim that edge there. Trim that edge slightly so it's even. Oops. Okay, so there's our base card. I want a piece of black that's about half an inch smaller all the way. So that will be four and seven eighths. By five and what three quarters down to a quarter. Five and a quarter. And I'm standing again, so actually that's too wide and too short. No, it's just too wide. Bear with me. I'll trim that down a bit more. Four and an eighth. What have I done? Oh, I haven't taken it enough. There. should be right yeah that's better okay so that one there so we've got a red and black and I'll trim down my see if I have to trim it yeah so I'll trim that down so that's only shows a tiny bit of black around the edges so what was that four and yeah, so take that to three and a half measurements that's five and a quarter so five and an eighth there we go so we've got some black we've got some red we've got some very Christmassy things happening here we've got our buffalo check in real red there we are so what do we think of that so since I said it reminded me of Santa, we better get some Santa action happening. Um, where are you, Santa? I haven't got the one where he's got his surfboard. I think that would be perfect. But I might just use might use the signs of Santa from the holiday catalogue. Here he is here, Santa. I think he's lovely with his wish list. Isn't that naughty list? Here he is. Just do him on some, well, since I'm not using this, I'm going to just stamp him on that since I'm not using it. Just waste not, want not. Oh, hi, Pamela. Thanks for call, for joining me. Oh, and Chris, hi. Yes, I agree. Black was much better, Chris. Thanks for joining me, guys. So there's Santa. I'm winging it now. So I've done the planned part of the um, proceedings I'm, I'm sort of uh, playing it by ear now with um, the new buffalo or the buffalo check I don't think it's new but it was new to me I just got written in a recent order so we'll ink up Santa nice forgive my shaking everything my video setup is actually a sort of a flexible leg tripod uh, yeah wrapped around a a retort stand from an old high school science lab so it does uh, it's quite flimsy at time when I'm shaking the world like I do so um, yes so if you ever have an old science lab school that's refurbishing its science lab um, yeah the retort stands really handy okay so there's our Santa Oh, I got a got my um, silver advancement certificate in the mail this week. I was very proud, and I got my necklace. 
I'll show you my necklace. I got my necklace in the mail as well, in the last order as well, my silver advancement necklace, which is lovely. Just show you that. See, that's what you get for advancing to silver. I don't know if you guys are, have done that yet. Um, it's really pretty. I put it onto my own chain because the chain I got with it, I mean, I know I'm short, and I am short, but the chain sort of practically went down to my belly button, so I thought, no, I want to be able to see it, so... I was really proud of that. It was um, really nice. So I've been wearing that with pride all week. Uh, anyway, back to Santa. So I'll, I'll colour in Santa just quickly. Um, so I'll use Dark Poppy Parade for his red. I don't think there's a real red mar um, blend. There might be a marker, but I don't have that one. So I'll just... Poppy Parade's pretty close. Might be actually a tad brighter. So I'll just colour in his hat. Tanned is nice and quick. Doesn't have very many colours. Pretty much red and white. Just colour him in there. His belt's already done. Now I find with this stamp set, with many, it's actually nice sometimes to do it in emboss it as well. Even just stamp it in black and then in gloss because you get that clear dark black line. So even just do it in Versamark and then emboss in, um, in black. It's very, really nice. So there's his garments. I generally then do his, oh, do his buckle in a yellow. This one is dark something. Dark Daffodil Delight. It's there. And his face. What do we all use when we generally doing faces? I go straight to ivory. So fairly predictable there. So I'll just do his ears and his face. My kid. My kids are up, so there's going to be some thumping in the background. There we are. Cool. We'll leave his white gloves white. And I love it when he has... Where's my thingy? I love it. And probably only I, we know it's there. But I love the... Um, this is a Wink of, uh, Wink of Stella. Wink of Stella. And I usually do his white bits, his bobble on his hat. And he's oh, done that a bit quick. It's actually run. That's what you've got to be careful with your ink of Stella. Your wink of Stella. You've got to be careful because it will make you some of your inks run. And I have been known to do his beard, but I might give that a miss because it might run, like his eyebrows have. Anyway, I'll leave that. So there's Santa in all his glory. So I'm just going to get the, um, actually, put him on there like, no, but that's too much white there. I'm going to get the, um, get the, uh, the thinlets and cut him out. There we go. So here are the thinlets that go with that pack. And there is Santa there. Notice I've put all my, I take all my, um, I take all my thinlets off the plastic, off the paper backing and put them on magnets. Just find that it's just so much better and you don't end up with a horrible ripping problem. So I'll find my, I'll just pop this through over here. Just uh, talk amongst yourselves for a second while I cut him up. Oh, crash bang. So there's Santa all cut out. So I'll put him on here. Okay, so I might give him a little bit of a backing just to help him stand out a little bit. Um, possibly a circle. Bear with me. I reckon he probably needs a circle behind him. Circle of red. Red. Circle of red. 
with black. Or a circle of white. Does he fade into nothing too much when he's got a circle of white? Hmm. Okay, let's go or black. You might stand out nicely on black. How about that? Yeah, I think I like that actually. Yep, so I'm going to go black. Santa's going to be on black. So I'll use our I'll use our layered layered circle framelits. So I want a largish circle for Santa so it doesn't have to be too large you can overlap a little bit is that going to be too big no that's right so I'm going to do that one in the black and I want something a little bit larger with the frilled edge in the red so the next size up would be um, maybe bigger than that. That one. Okay, so I'm going to have that in red and, and black. So bear with me, I'm going to put that through again. So a circle in the black and the Scissors. Scissors. Pop that through like that. Just popping that through my through my big shot. got a circle of red for some reason my black didn't cut I'm gonna to have to pop that through again sorry guys I just cut myself a little bit for the right size I might have had it off the edge a little bit I'll just cut that the right size there pop it through again Who's joined us? Hi Susan, how are you? Thanks for joining me. Just winging it with Santa here at the moment, which is uh, probably only something you can say at certain times of the year. I'd already finished my um, the main card I was doing. Decided to have a bit of a go with this beautiful buck buffalo check that just came in the mail in the, my last order. So there's Santa there. I think that red one's slightly large, I think. Anyway, we'll go with it for the moment. Nobody would notice it except us. Pop him on there. That's quite cute. He hasn't got a sentiment yet. So let's think about a sentiment next. Oh, that's going to bug me. Sorry, guys. I'm going to have to redo that circle the next size down, that frilled circle. Frustrating watching me craft, I'm sure. Anyway, I'm just popping that same one through, just with the smaller um, through the circle. Just to, it was popping out too much for me. I didn't like it. Took too much of our beautiful check away. That's better. What do you think? That's better, isn't it? drop Santa. So there's Santa there on his little circle. Pop those away. Okay, so do something with a sentiment with Santa. Uh, what's with the set? Where's the set gone? Oh, here we go. So we could say 
wishing you everything on your list because he has got a list doesn't he and then inside you put and more sort of um as a, as a secondary part so i might try and put his wishing you everything on your list here somewhere um what could we where could we put that where could we put that uh, i've lost inspiration now guys you're gonna have to tell me wishing you or we just go something small how do we go how do we go with this one hmm i'm a bit perplexed would maybe we put him centrally and then the sentiment could go down there maybe and then i could use it or it could go i don't want to cover him over at all um let's have a try let's have a look let's just do it and see what inspiration catches us or just leave it blank on the front because i'm lacking inspiration we actually put on our insert i think this will work we put the signpost the signpost is really just excuse, excuse me santa we could put the signpost there Oh no, the wishing you everything for Christmas is too big. That's not going to work. I might use that for the and more inside. Anyway, we'll put that aside. We've still got to get the wishing you everything for Christmas here. So what if Santa was down the bottom there a little bit more? And then I'd have room at the top. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'll do. So I might put that on a, on a tag of some sort. What have I got? Where's my tag maker? I'll put it on this one. This one's quite cute. It's the tailored tag. Just use it white. Tag there. Do you think the sentiment beneath looked good, did you, Wendy? Oh, okay. Well, wait a minute. Let's have a look. Maybe I can do that. So put him up a little bit higher. And then put that there. So that's going to fit nicely on there. And then give it a little bit of a um, little bit of something by putting some red. Where's my red? My red's gone here. Yeah. I punch another couple with the red. So that's the tailored tag. It's really handy. And pop those behind so one slightly above you can cut them as well one slightly above and one slightly below and that gives quite a cute little sentiment box there and then I can put that on there what do we think how's that look oh yeah the comments do really lag you reckon the top that we reckon I was actually quite quite taken with that I think that's quite good. So how about we go that? Yeah, let's do that. I'll assemble it that way. Okay, so bear with me in my creative process when you're winging it. I will pop these on before I change my mind. Who else is on? I've got nine people watching, which is really nice. So if I haven't said hello, um hello thanks for joining me there we go so there's our black here's our beautiful buffalo check i had another stamping up um, milestone this week one of my lovely team ladies um, called donna far too many donnas in in my life no not too many they're all wonderful one of my team members called Donna um, actually uh, reached her 900 CSV and became a um, qualified recruit, which is really good, which means she's well and truly on the way to her bronze elite. So hopefully in the next few months anyway, she'll get to be bronze elite, which would be really nice. So if you're watching this in playback, Donna, congratulations. 
Um, so that's my black. Sorry, I'm getting confused with my um, order of things. There's my black on my red. Red and black and black and red. And then Santa on there. I might put Santa on some, um, some dimensional. Nobody wants Santa to in the background. Santa has to be in the front. It's his time of year after all. Just use some mini ones because he's got some little tiny bits here that need to be supported. His feet and his list tend to wiggle about a bit. probably do. I'll just get these off. Forgive my clumsiness. They never seem to cooperate with me. The paper on um, maybe my nails aren't long enough or something. I want to stay where they are. Yeah, this one definitely wants to stay where it is. a trial okay so we'll pop Santa on here as I say I don't think it matters too much if his bits overhang a bit just a tiny bit there he is I'll pop him on so we were decided to have Santa down low didn't we on the down low so we'll have him down here then he can actually be on the Buffalo check doesn't it because he's low doesn't really matter if he's off the edge there we are that's quite cute and our sentiment which we're going to mount on those get that little bit above and a little bit below Forgive me while I stop talking while I concentrate. Oh. Bit more on him. And I'll flip over so I get this with the right. I can wiggle this a little bit and get it the right distance in. How's that? That's quite good. A bit too much glue again. There we are. So that can go up there with our sentiment on it. <coughs> Bigger block. There. And I'll use black. Good old black. straight as I can there we go that's pretty good getting good at this wing and that stuff there we go I'll pop that up there might just glue that I think rather than dimensionals it because Santa's already dimensioned I think I like that buffalo check I think that's going to make a regular appearance in my videos from now on not just Christmas but all year round inside so we've got wishing you everything on your list so we need the and more I don't think I'm going to bother with the signposts because I'm starting to get hungry for my breakfast have I left enough of that paper no I'm going to need a different piece of paper so I'll just cut myself in my normal sized inside which is four inches wide, 
and five and five eighths long. There we go. Um, and oh, where's Santa gone? It's got lost. It's run away. Did anyone see where I put him? <laughs> oh, here he is. Here he is. Okay, so there's Santa. So he's got wishing you everything on your list. And there's a tiny little inner set and more. Tiny little and more, which is here. So I'll pop that inside. of me wants to put it down here because it's sort of like a little joke it's in the middle there oh yeah in the middle there it's sort of the highlight of it isn't it I could put that up there and more slightly off but that's all right joy of handmade and then I really love these little presents that come in that set I think they're, they're so fun and they actually make a really nice um, card. They're really nice on the insert. You can pop them down in here. So um, they, and then colour them in with um, the blends. So bring the colours from the front in. I've actually did one as well where I sort of treat, did them as a border or along the bottom. But I think that's just quite nice with one there. So I'll colour that with the reds and the whites and the yellows from the from the card and there's my insert looks a bit longer than my normal insert but that just might be the angle I'm looking at it from so I'll pop that in and there's Santa done anyway that's me done for today I've had enough I'm exhausted now all that winging it um, some nice cards I think I love this Santa's um, signs of Santa set I think it's really sweet um, and quite very, very Christmassy. So there's our insert there. I'll colour those in later. So that's Santa. So what have we done today? I've done my winging it with Santa and I've done these glorious ones with the um, beautiful baubles set as well. So that's the three I've done today. Um, I've got so many special offers at the moment um, that I can't even think what they are at the moment but follow my um, follow my page to find out. I have got a special deal at the moment that if you buy a Stamparatus um, online with me I will send you the that's it, that's mine there. I will send you the grid paper as a thank you. So that grid paper is invaluable when you're using your stamp your stamparatus so yes if you buy a stamparatus uh, from me i will send you this as a thank you gift they're worth uh, ten dollars 25 so that's one thing to think about um i've got that goes till the end of the year so they're right up through till december uh, i also have a november offer that if you um if you spend one hundred dollars you place a one hundred dollar order in November and use the um, code my November host code which is on my page you'll go into the draw to win the one for all stamp set which is quite cute I love this lady on her bicycle down here and this as well so there's lovely stuff there so order over a hundred dollars plus postage from me put use the host code for November and go into the chance to win that I will draw that the first week of December uh, so anyway, a couple of uh, special offers at the moment. Um, really, really glad you guys can join me. Thank you. Thank you to anyone who watches the replay. Um, and as I say, if you want to join my team, the Chatty Stampers, or find anything out about these wonderful products, just uh, do not hesitate to contact me, uh, either directly or through my page. But anyway, have a nice weekend, everyone. Um, and I will see you all soon. See ya.